Most kids play hide and seek during the day, in backyards or living rooms cluttered with toys. But not me. My mom liked to play hide and seek late at night at the park near our house. It was a strange habit, one that made me both nervous and excited. At nine o'clock sharp, no matter the season, she would turn to me with a smile and say, Ready? We would walk to the park together, me holding her hand, my small fingers wrapped tightly around hers. It wasn't far, just a five-minute walk from our front door, but it felt like entering another world. The park was huge, with winding paths and trees that loomed over us like silent giants. In the darkness, the playground's metal swing sets and slides turned into shadowy figures. I liked the thrill of hiding, of feeling the cool night air on my skin as I crouched behind a bush or pressed myself against a tree. My heart would race with a mix of fear and joy, knowing she was looking for me, but also trusting that she would always find me. It was our special game. No one else played with us. It was just me and mom, every evening, under the cover of night. But there was always something that nagged at me. A question I couldn't quite put into words when I was younger. Why so late? Most moms put their kids to bed by then, read them stories, kissed them goodnight. Not my mom. Our evenings were for this strange game, and when I asked her why, she would only say, it's the best time to play. No one will bother us. She was right. The park was empty, always. The only sounds were the wind rustling through the trees or the occasional hoot of an owl. Sometimes I would hear distant footsteps, but mom would always hush me, her eyes glancing around as if making sure no one was watching us. It was thrilling in a way that made me feel grown up. My friends would never understand. They played in daylight, under the eyes of their parents, safe and sound. But I had something different, something secret, something just between me and mom. I still remember the first night we started playing. I was six, and it was a warm summer evening. The sky was a deep, velvety blue, and I had been restless, unable to fall asleep. Mom came into my room, her eyes bright, her voice soft. Do you want to do something fun? At that age, I would have followed her anywhere. She grabbed my hand, and we snuck out of the house, giggling like we were getting away with something. She led me to the park, and that was the first time I hid from her. I tucked myself behind a bench, trying to stifle my laughter. I could hear her footsteps, slow and steady, as she called my name in that sing-song voice of hers. The moment she found me, we both erupted in laughter. From then on, it became our ritual. But as I grew older, something felt off. I began to notice things. Mom's hands would tremble slightly when we left the house. Her eyes, once warm and full of love, seemed to flicker with something else something I didn't understand. She started to insist that I hide better, further away, sometimes telling me to hide behind the trees near the edge of the park, where the shadows were deepest. I didn't question it much at first. It was still fun, our secret game. But the more we played, the more I started to feel like something wasn't right. Why did she look so serious when we arrived at the park? Why did her voice drop to a whisper when she told me to run and hide? And why did she always look around? as if she were afraid of something. One night I asked her, Mom, why do we play hide and seek at night? Can't we do it in the daytime like other kids? She paused for a moment, her face hidden in the dim light of the street lamp. Then she knelt down in front of me, her hands resting on my shoulders. Because it's safer this way, she said, her voice firm. There are things in the daytime that aren't safe for us, things that can hurt you. But at night, at night we can be free. I didn't understand what she meant, but I nodded anyway. I was just a kid, and I trusted her completely. After all, she was my mom. If she said it was safer, then it had to be true, right? Still, the question lingered in the back of my mind. What was it that made the night safer for us? And why, even as she smiled, did she seem so tense? As the months passed, our game became more intense. Mom started counting faster, her voice sharper as she called out, Ready or not, here I come. I would hide deeper and deeper into the park, sometimes hearing her footsteps behind me, quick and urgent. The excitement I once felt began to turn into something else, a strange mix of anxiety and confusion. I started to wonder if we were really playing a game at all. But every night at nine, she would still ask, Ready? And I would always say yes. 
It was fall when I first started to feel afraid. The leaves had turned golden, and they crunched beneath my feet as mom and I made our way to the park. Our walks had become more silent over the weeks, with only the sounds of the wind and the distant creak of the swings breaking the quiet. Something had changed in mom. I wasn't sure what it was, but it made my stomach knot up every time we reached the park gates. That night, the moon hung low in the sky, casting long, twisted shadows across the park. I felt them more than I saw them. They danced along the path, like dark hands reaching out, but I shrugged it off. I told myself it was just the way the moonlight hit the trees. But as we walked deeper into the park, I noticed mom glancing over her shoulder more than usual. She squeezed my hand tightly when we reached the large oak tree, the one where she always began her counting. Hide well tonight, she whispered. Her voice was low, almost a hiss. Don't let me find you too quickly. Why? I asked. My voice came out small and unsure, but she didn't answer me. Instead, she knelt down, looking straight into my eyes. I remember how intense her gaze was, how her fingers dug into my shoulders as if she was holding me there, in that moment, with everything she had. Promise me, sweetie, she said, her voice trembling. Promise you'll hide well. I promise, mom, I whispered back, confused and a little scared. She stood up quickly, brushed her hands down her coat, and turned to face the tree. One, two, three. I ran. My feet moved faster than they ever had before, the sound of her counting fading behind me as I darted through the park. The air was cool and sharp, biting at my skin, but I barely felt it. All I could think about was hiding. Not just finding a good spot, but disappearing completely. My legs carried me to the far end of the park, near the thick bushes by the old stone bench. I crouched behind them, panting. My heart hammered in my chest, the sound of it filling my ears. I told myself it was just the game, that it was no different from all the other nights we'd played. But tonight felt different. Tonight, I wasn't sure I wanted to be found. I peeked out from behind the bush, scanning the park. The moonlight cast everything in an eerie glow, and the trees looked taller, more menacing. I could see the swings swaying gently, though there was no wind. And then there was Mom, walking slowly through the park, her silhouette a dark figure against the silver light. She moved with purpose, her head turning from side to side, scanning the shadows, searching for me. Ready or not, here I come. Her voice rang out, loud and clear, cutting through the quiet night. I shivered, pulling my knees tighter to my chest. It wasn't the words that scared me, it was the way she said them. There was something off, something wrong in her voice. The usual playful lilt was gone, replaced with something harder, colder. I watched her move, her steps quickening as she passed by the playground, her eyes darting to the slides and the swings. For a moment, I thought I saw her stop. She stood still, her back straight, her head tilted to the side as if listening for something. I held my breath, hoping she wouldn't hear the frantic beating of my heart. Then she moved again, walking further into the park, her figure disappearing behind the trees. I exhaled slowly, my breath coming out in shaky gasps. What was happening? Why was this night so different? I thought back to the way she had looked at me, the urgency in her voice. Was it really just a game? Or was there something more, something she wasn't telling me? As I sat there, hiding in the bushes, I heard a sound. It was faint at first, like a rustle in the leaves, but it grew louder. Footsteps. Not mom's. These were lighter, quicker, and they were getting closer. I ducked lower, peeking through the gaps in the branches. My eyes scanned the park, searching for the source of the sound. I couldn't see anything at first, just the usual shadows and the faint outlines of the trees. But then I saw it, a figure moving between the trees, slipping in and out of the shadows. It wasn't mom. It was someone else, someone tall and thin, with long arms that seemed to stretch out as they moved. My breath caught in my throat. Who was that? Why were they here? I tried to stay calm, telling myself it was just another person, maybe a late night walker or someone cutting through the park. But deep down, I knew that wasn't true. No one else ever came to the park this late. No one except us. I kept my eyes on the figure, watching as it moved silently through the park, its long limbs swaying as it walked. It didn't seem to be in a hurry, but it was heading in the same direction mom had gone. 
A chill ran down my spine, and I bit my lip, trying to figure out what to do. Should I call out to mom? Should I run to her and tell her someone else was here? But something stopped me. Maybe it was the way the figure moved, or the way the park felt so much darker all of a sudden. I don't know. But I stayed quiet, my heart pounding in my chest as I watched the figure disappear into the trees. Minutes passed. I didn't dare move. The park was silent again, except for the occasional rustle of leaves in the breeze. I strained my ears, listening for any sign of mom, but I heard nothing. The tension in my chest grew, nodding tighter and tighter until I could barely breathe. Then finally I heard her. Where are you, sweetie? Her voice floated through the park, soft and melodic, but there was an edge to it. A sharpness that hadn't been there before. I swallowed hard, my hands shaking as I pushed myself up from the ground. Slowly, carefully, I began to creep out from behind the bushes, my eyes scanning the park for any sign of the tall figure. It was gone, or at least, I couldn't see it anymore. I stood up fully, my legs wobbly, and started walking toward where I had last seen Mom. The trees cast long shadows over the path, and I had to fight the urge to break into a run. I didn't know why I was so scared, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was about to happen. As I reached the clearing, I saw her. Mom was standing in the middle of the park, her back to me, her head tilted slightly as if she were listening for something. I stopped in my tracks, watching her from a distance. Mom? My voice came out small, barely a whisper. She didn't move. Mom? I called out again, louder this time. She turned slowly, her eyes locking onto mine. For a moment, I thought I saw relief wash over her face, but then it was gone, replaced by something else. Something I didn't understand. Come here, sweetheart, she said, her voice soft and strange. It's time to go home. But I didn't move. Something kept me rooted to the spot, staring at her, feeling like I was seeing her for the first time. And in that moment, I realized I wasn't playing hide and seek anymore. Something far more dangerous was lurking in the dark. After that night, the park didn't feel the same. I kept asking myself what had happened, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't explain it. The game we used to play, our special hide and seek, wasn't fun anymore. It felt like something else, something darker. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep playing. But mom insisted. Every night at nine, she would still turn to me, her smile bright but her eyes distant, and ask, ready? I always nodded, though my heart wasn't in it. I didn't want to disappoint her. I never could. The next few nights were a blur of tension. We would walk to the park together, and I could feel the unease growing in my chest with each step. The shadows felt thicker, the trees taller. I started to notice things I hadn't seen before, small details that made my skin crawl. The way the swings moved on their own, just a little, as if someone invisible was sitting on them. The way the streetlights flickered, casting everything in strange, broken light. And worst of all, the way mom's face would change when we stepped into the park. Her smile would fade, replaced by a look I couldn't understand. Was it fear? Or was it something else? Hide well, she'd say every time. The urgency in her voice never went away. If anything, it grew stronger, sharper, like she was scared of something, scared for me. I tried to brush it off, to pretend it was all just a game like it used to be. But I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. And no matter how hard I tried to ignore it, I kept thinking about the tall figure I'd seen that night. The way it had moved through the park, so silently, so calmly. I hadn't told mom about it. I didn't know how to explain it to her. Besides, she already seemed on edge, always looking over her shoulder, always listening for something I couldn't hear. One night, as we made our way to the park, I worked up the courage to ask her. Mom, why do we have to play hide and seek every night? She glanced down at me, her expression unreadable. Because it's fun, she said quickly, almost too quickly. Then, after a pause, she added, and it's safer this way. There was again, that word. Why did she keep saying that? What did she mean by safer? I wanted to ask her, to press her for answers, but something in her voice stopped me. There was a finality to the way she said it, as if she couldn't bear to explain more. We reached the park, and I watched as she walked to the oak tree, 
the same one we always started at. Her steps seemed heavier than usual, slower, as if she were dragging herself through the motions. She turned to me, her eyes glinting in the faint moonlight. Hide well, sweetheart, she said, her voice trembling. Don't let me find you too soon. I nodded, feeling the familiar pit of anxiety settle in my stomach. I ran, not just because I had to, but because I needed to. The further I got from her, the more I could breathe. I darted behind the old jungle gym, crouching down behind the rusted bars. The metal was cold against my hands as I pressed myself into the shadows, trying to blend in with the night. As I sat there listening to the silence, I heard her counting. It was slower than usual, each number dragging out longer than the last. One, two, three. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I tried to calm my racing thoughts, but the memory of that figure, tall and thin, with those long, swaying arms, crept back into my mind. What had it been? The person? A shadow? Or something else? F -f -f six. I shifted my position, peeking out from behind the jungle gym. Mom was still by the oak tree, her back to me, but something about the way she stood made my heart race. She wasn't moving. Usually by this point she'd be scanning the park looking for me, but tonight she stayed still, her body stiff and tense. Seven, eight, nine. Her voice wavered, and for a second, I thought I heard her whisper something else, something under her breath. I couldn't make out the words, but they sounded desperate. Then she started moving. I ducked back down, trying to calm my breathing. My heart pounded in my chest, louder than her footsteps, louder than the rustling of the leaves. I kept my eyes fixed on the ground, focusing on the sound of her walking, getting closer, then farther as she moved through the park. But it wasn't just her footsteps I heard. There was something else, another sound, quieter, but unmistakable. It was the sound of something moving through the trees. My breath caught in my throat as I strained to listen. It was like the soft crunch of leaves, or the gentle snap of a twig. Whatever it was, it wasn't mom. I peeked out again, my eyes scanning the park. There, near the far end just past the swings, I saw it. The figure. The same one from that night. Tall and thin, moving in and out of the shadows. Its long arms swayed with each step, as if it were gliding through the air. And this time, it wasn't just wandering aimlessly. It was heading straight for mom. My heart stopped. I wanted to scream, to call out to her, to warn her. But I couldn't. My voice was stuck in my throat, frozen with fear. I watched, helpless, as the figure drew closer and closer to her. She didn't see it. She was too busy looking for me. Mom, I whispered, barely audible. She stopped, her head snapping up as if she had heard something. Her eyes scanned the park, her body tense. But she didn't see the figure. It was too far behind her, hidden in the shadows of the trees. I pressed myself deeper into my hiding spot, my hands trembling. I couldn't move. I couldn't make a sound. The figure stopped too, just a few feet from her, standing perfectly still, watching. Waiting. Then, slowly, it began to retreat, slipping back into the darkness, disappearing behind the trees once again. My chest heaved as I let out a shaky breath. It was gone. For now. But the fear lingered. Something was wrong. Something was very, very wrong. Mom started moving again, her footsteps lighter now, as if she sensed the tension in the air. I waited, my body still shaking, until she was far enough away before I crept out from behind the jungle gym. My legs felt weak, but I forced myself to stand, to walk slowly toward her. She spotted me first, her face lighting up with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. There you are, she said, her voice tight with forced cheer. You're getting better at hiding. I forced a smile back, but inside I felt hollow. The game wasn't fun anymore. It was terrifying. And whatever was lurking in the park, whatever that figure was, it wasn't part of the game. We walked home in silence that night. Mom didn't seem to notice how quiet I was, how I kept glancing over my shoulder, half expecting to see the figure following us. She was lost in her own thoughts, her eyes flicking nervously from side to side as we walked through the dark streets. When we got home, I finally found the courage to ask her again. Mom, what are we hiding from? She stopped, her hand on the doorknob, 
her body frozen in place. For a moment, I thought she wasn't going to answer me. But then she turned, her face pale in the dim light of the porch. From me, she whispered. Mom's words echoed in my head long after she whispered them. From me? What did she mean by that? I wanted to ask her more, but as soon as we stepped inside the house, it was like the conversation never happened. She kissed my forehead, smiled, and sent me to bed as if we hadn't just shared the most chilling moment of my life. I lay awake for hours that night, staring at the ceiling. The darkness felt heavier, pressing in from all sides, and I couldn't shake the image of that figure. Its long, swaying arms, the way it had moved silently through the park, always just out of reach. But even that wasn't as terrifying as the way Mom had looked at me when she said those words. The next day, everything seemed normal again. Or at least Mom acted like it. She made breakfast, cleaned the house, hummed to herself as if we didn't spend our nights playing a game that felt more like survival. I tried to talk to her about it, to ask her what she had meant, but every time I opened my mouth, the words got stuck in my throat. Something inside me knew that if I asked, if I really pressed her for answers, I wouldn't like what I heard. So I stayed quiet. The days passed in a strange, tense blur. Each night, we went back to the park. Each night, I hid while Mom searched. And each night, the figure was there, watching from the shadows, always waiting, always retreating before I could figure out what it was. I didn't know how much longer I could take it. The fear was building, tightening around my chest like a vice, but I didn't know how to make it stop. Then one night, everything changed. It was colder than usual, and the wind cut through the park like icy fingers. The moon was full, casting an eerie glow over everything, making the shadows stretch and bend in unnatural ways. Mom seemed especially tense that evening. Her hands were shaking as we walked, and she kept glancing over her shoulder more than she usually did. Hide well tonight, she whispered, her voice barely audible. There was something in her tone that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. It wasn't just fear, it was panic. Desperation. I didn't ask why. I just nodded, turned, and ran as fast as I could. But this time, I didn't hide in the usual places. Something inside me told me I needed to be far away, as far from her as I could get. I ran to the farthest corner of the park where the trees grew thick and close together. The darkness here was deeper, almost suffocating, but I didn't care. I needed to be hidden, really hidden. I crouched behind a large tree, pressing my back against the rough bark, my breath coming in shallow gasps. I listened. I could hear Mom's footsteps in the distance, slow and methodical. But they weren't the only sounds. There was something else, quieter, but there a rustling, a faint crunch of leaves. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to listen, trying to figure out where it was coming from. Then I saw it. The figure. It was moving through the trees again, its long limbs swaying unnaturally as it glided closer. But this time, it wasn't just wandering aimlessly. It was coming straight for me. My breath caught in my throat, and for a moment, I was frozen with fear. What was I supposed to do? scream? My legs felt like lead, refusing to move even though every instinct screamed at me to get out of there. Then suddenly it stopped. The figure stood still, just a few feet away from me, its face hidden in the shadows. My heart pounded so loudly I was sure it could hear me, but it didn't move. It just stood there watching. I squeezed my eyes shut, trying to will it away, hoping that if I didn't look at it, it would disappear. But when I opened my eyes again, it was still there. Closer now. Almost close enough to touch. And then I heard it. A voice. Faint but familiar. It's okay. I blinked, my breath catching in my throat. The voice. It sounded like... Mm. I stood up slowly, my legs shaking, and took a hesitant step forward. The figure didn't move. It just stood there, its face still hidden in shadow. I swallowed hard taking another step and then another until I was standing right in front of it. Mom? I whispered, my voice barely audible. The figure shifted, its head tilting to the side, and then, slowly, it stepped into the light. It was her, but not the mom I knew. Her face was pale, almost ghostly, and her eyes, her eyes were wide, wild, like she wasn't really seeing me. 
like she wasn't really there. Mom? I repeated, my voice trembling. She didn't answer. She just stared at me, her chest rising and falling with shallow breaths. I reached out to her, my fingers brushing against her arm, and that's when I felt it, the cold. Her skin was ice cold, like she had been standing outside for hours, frozen in place. Mom, what's going on? I asked, panic rising in my chest. Why are we here? She blinked, her eyes focusing on me for a brief moment, and for the first time in weeks, I saw the mom I knew, the one who used to laugh and smile, who used to tuck me into bed at night. I'm sorry, she whispered, her voice barely more than a breath. I'm so sorry. Sorry for what? I asked, stepping closer to her. Mom, what's happening? She shook her head, her eyes filling with tears. I didn't want this. I didn't want you to see me like this. See you like what? I asked, my heart pounding. But before she could answer, I heard it, the sound of footsteps behind me. Slow, deliberate, getting closer and closer. I turned, my breath catching in my throat and saw him. The figure. Only this time, it wasn't hiding in the shadows. It was a man, tall and gaunt, with pale skin and dark, sunken eyes. He stood at the edge of the clearing, watching us, his gaze fixed on Mom. Get away from her. I screamed, backing up instinctively. Leave us alone. But the man didn't move. He just stood there, his eyes cold and empty, like he wasn't really looking at us. Like he wasn't really human. I tried to keep you safe, Mom whispered, grabbing my arm. Her fingers were trembling, clutching me so tightly it hurt. I tried to hide you from him. For me. I stared at her, my mind racing. What are you talking about? Mom's grip tightened, her voice shaking. At night, I change. I'm not myself anymore. I don't know what happens to me, but I become someone else, something else. And he, she glanced at the man, her face pale with fear. He's been following me for weeks, waiting for me to lose control. The man took a step forward, his eyes locked on Mom and I felt a surge of terror wash over me. What does he want? I asked, my voice trembling. He wants me, Mom said, her voice barely above a whisper. He's been waiting for me to become like him. I stared at her, my mind spinning. None of this made sense. How could Mom change? How could she become like him? But then I saw it. The way her eyes flickered, the way her body tensed, like she was fighting something inside her. And I realized that this wasn't just a game of hide and seek. This was something far more dangerous. I tried to protect you, Mom whispered, her voice breaking. I thought if I made you hide, if I kept you away from me, I could keep you safe. I felt tears welling up in my eyes, but I didn't know what to say. How could I? My mom, my loving, gentle mom, was telling me that she was turning into something else, something I didn't understand. The man took another step forward, and this time, Mom pushed me behind her. Run, she said, her voice firm. Go hide. Don't look back. I didn't want to leave her. I didn't want to leave her alone with him. But I could see it in her eyes, the fear, the desperation. She wasn't asking me. She was begging me. So I ran. The moment I hung up, the world around me seemed to tilt, as though the ground beneath my feet wasn't stable anymore. Everything was wrong. The streetlights buzzed overhead, casting long shadows, and the once familiar park now felt like a twisted nightmare I couldn't escape. I stood there, trying to keep my breathing steady, but my chest tightened with each passing second. Every small sound, a distant car horn, the rustle of leaves, sent jolts of fear through me. I could still feel the chill of my mother's hand on my arm, her cold skin, and those wild eyes, almost unrecognizable. What had she become? And what was this man, this figure that had been stalking us night after night? Was he even human? I wanted to turn and run again, but where would I go? My legs felt heavy, locked in place under the dim light of the street lamp. I glanced back toward the park entrance, half expecting to see the figure emerge from the darkness, or worse, Mom. My stomach churned at the thought. I wrapped my arms around myself feeling like a child again, terrified and alone. Minutes ticked by, each one slower than the last. I kept checking my phone, willing Dad to call or send a message. Nothing. Finally, 
After what felt like an eternity, I saw headlights approaching in the distance. My pulse quickened, and I squinted against the glare of the car as it pulled up to the curb. Dad jumped out before the engine even finished shutting off, his face a mix of panic and confusion. He ran to me, his eyes scanning me from head to toe as if making sure I was still in one piece. What happened? He asked, grabbing my shoulders gently. His voice was steady, but I could hear the worry threaded through it. Where's your mother? Are you hurt? I shook my head, unable to stop the tears from spilling over. I don't know what's going on, Dad, I choked out, my voice barely more than a whisper. She's, she's different. I don't understand it. There's this man, he's been following us every night. She's been taking me to the park to hide, but tonight was different. She said she was changing, that she wasn't herself. And then I saw her, dead. I saw her like I've never seen her before. She was cold, her skin. I trailed off, shaking uncontrollably now. Dad's grip on my shoulders tightened as he pulled me into a hug, his arms wrapping around me protectively. It's okay, he murmured, though his voice trembled just a little. I'm here. We'll figure this out. Just breathe, all right? But I couldn't just breathe. I couldn't shake the image of her, of mom, or whoever she was now, standing in the park, looking at me like a stranger. I clung to dad, feeling like a child who had wandered too far from home, lost in the dark. We have to go find her, I finally whispered, pulling away just enough to look up at him. She's still in the park. I don't know what's happening, but we can't leave her there. Dad hesitated, glancing toward the entrance of the park. His face was pale, his brow furrowed as if he was trying to process everything I'd told him. I could see the conflict in his eyes. He wanted to believe me. But how could any of this make sense? How could I even explain it? I'll go, he said after a moment, his voice quiet but firm. Stay here, under the light. Don't move until I get back, okay? No, Dad, I protested, grabbing his arm. I don't want you to go in there alone. We don't know what's out there, and, and Mom, she's not. My voice broke and I couldn't finish the sentence. He placed a hand over mine, his expression softening. I won't be long, I promise. But I need you to stay safe. Whatever's happening, we'll figure it out, but I can't do that if you're in danger too. Stay here where I can see you. I nodded reluctantly, swallowing the lump in my throat as he turned and walked toward the park. I watched his figure disappear into the shadows, the dark swallowing him whole, just like it had swallowed mom. The silence that followed was suffocating. I wrapped my arms tighter around myself, trying to keep the fear at bay. I wanted to believe everything would be okay, that dad would find mom, that we'd get answers, that this nightmare would finally end. But a part of me, deep down, knew it wouldn't be that simple. Time stretched on, each minute an eternity. I kept my eyes fixed on the park entrance, willing dad to come back. But the longer I waited, the more the dread grew inside me. What if something happened to him? What if he didn't come back? The wind picked up, cold and biting, and I shivered, glancing around the empty street. The street lamp flickered once, twice, then went out, plunging everything into darkness. My breath caught in my throat, and I stumbled backward, my heart racing. The world felt wrong, tilted and off-kilter. The darkness pressed in from all sides, and for a moment, I thought I saw movement, something in the corner of my vision, just beyond the trees. Dad? I whispered, my voice trembling. No response. I took a hesitant step forward, my foot crunching against the gravel. Dad? I called, louder this time. Still nothing. I fumbled for my phone, the screen casting an eerie glow as I checked for any messages, any calls. There was nothing. The silence pressed down on me, heavy and thick, and I could feel the panic rising in my chest again. Just as I was about to turn and run, a figure emerged from the shadows. I froze, my breath catching in my throat. It was Dad, but his face was pale, his expression tight with fear. We need to leave, he said, his voice low and urgent. Now, I blinked, my mind racing. What? What about Mom? Did you find her? He shook his head, grabbing my hand and pulling me toward the car. We can't stay here. I'll explain everything later, but right now, we need to go. I didn't argue. I couldn't. 
The look in his eyes told me everything I needed to know. Something was horribly wrong, and whatever it was, we weren't safe. We climbed into the car, and as Dad sped away from the park, I glanced back through the window. For a moment, I thought I saw a figure standing at the edge of the trees, watching us. But it was gone before I could be sure. The drive home was silent, the air thick with unspoken fears. I wanted to ask what Dad had seen, what had happened in the park, but the words wouldn't come. And deep down, I wasn't sure I wanted to know. As we pulled into the driveway, Dad finally broke the silence. We'll figure this out, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. But tonight, tonight, we just need to stay safe. I nodded, though the unease still twisted in my gut. The word felt hollow now, like a promise neither of us could keep. But as I followed him into the house, I couldn't help but glance back one last time, half expecting to see the shadows following us home.